Hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, and you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about the cultural tipping point from going from a small business into a business that's medium-sized or even larger and starting to scale. Also, I'm going to be talking about some of the things I'm going through right now, one of which is how to discipline your employees. Something I'm still figuring out, but something I hope you can learn from as well. Today, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Gusto. If you haven't already, go to gusto.com slash bootcamp and get their software completely free for 90 days. Uh, Some of the things that Gusto does for your business that I haven't mentioned already is it allows you to set up a 401k plan for all your employees. That doesn't cost any extra. It comes with their software. Also, you can set up a 529 savings plan, which is for college uh, tuition savings for your employees as well. Again, tax benefits there for them. Also, you can set up an HSA, which is a health savings account, or an FSA, flexible savings account, which is basically allows your employees to have pre-tax benefit for saving towards uh, a health-related injury, illness, or something like that. So all things that are great for retaining your employees. And in addition to that, like they have commuter benefits, so you can actually like give benefits for people who are commuting to work. So all of those things you can find on Gusto, and you can try out their software for 90 days for free if you go to gusto.com slash bootcamp. Now, today I wanna to talk about some things that I've been going through in my business, and then there were kind of, these topics were sort of also spurred by a couple questions that I got in recently via email. And the one that kind of spurred the first part of today's episode, it was talking, the, the, the person was kind of in a, a debacle because they said, hey, like I've, I hired all my friends and people that I really liked early on in the business. Now we're starting to grow though, we're expanding. And now there's starting to be like some changes and they have to make some hierarchy in different positions. And there's starting to be some kind of tension in the business because things are not as they always have been. And things are changing. The culture of the business is changing and becoming a little more, not bureaucratic, but there's got to be more systems and structure in place instead of just people. It's great that you trust each other when you're small. And that's a great thing to find in your first several employees is just trusting them and knowing they're not going to try to rip you off and they are going to have your best interests at heart and they want the business to succeed. So trust is huge, but there comes a point when the business begins to scale and grow and there's more and more people involved that there, do, that there, there has to be systems, there has to be procedures, there has to have management, you have to have some sort of hierarchy, even if it's very flat, in order for the business to grow, thrive, and be productive. And so... You know, it's something that we're going through because just recently I've stepped out of day-to-day operations. So like literally this week is the first week I am completely out of day-to-day operations. Like I show up in the morning every day at Augusta, uh, but my job, what I'm doing is completely changing. And I don't think I've actually, it's really settled in yet how much of a change this is for me of me spending most of my day now focusing on the franchisees and trying to help their businesses instead of just trying to help our local, you know, corporate store here. And so, you know, I'm completely out of the day to day. Uh, and so that's a big change. That's a big uh, step. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something I've always wanted to do. It's definitely, you know, the franchising thing is always what I've wanted to do, be able to help other business owners actually build their business using the brand, their, you know, creating a website for them, having the marketing for them. Like that's what I've always wanted to do. So it's a huge, great, awesome step. However, when you have to go from where the founder is there every day and, you know, step back before that, the founder is on every single job, step back to that, the founder is with every employee every single day. Like as we begin to grow up, quote unquote, grow up, the business begins to grow up and, and mature, you know, like... There's got to be changes. There's got to be, you know, there definitely, there's no way that I can be with every employee every single day. It's just not going to happen. You know, then it evolved to the place where like, I'm not going to be on every single job every single day. It's just not going to happen. Uh, then it comes to a point where it's like, you know what, I'm not going to be able to see every customer. I, like, I don't know the customer's names. I don't know who they are because I didn't sell them the job and other estimators were involved. Or they, so, they got sold over the phone from the office. Like, so like, it begins, like, you know, becomes more and more about the systems and procedures you build and, and less and less about you, the personality, the founder of the business, running the machine of the business, knowing the customers, knowing everyone's you know, name and what they're going through in the organization. And you know, so now as I step back, you know, one of my managers actually said it to me, said, 
you, you're taking on the role more of a coach. And that really helped me uh, because it's not hard letting this go. It doesn't seem like I'm selling the business or like, definitely not like that. I'm still involved. I know all the employees locally, but it's very much like this cultural tipping point of like, okay, now no longer am I the founder going to be there every day. No, no longer am I going to be there to watch over everything. Like the systems and procedures that we set up in the business model runs the model. It runs the system. It's going to become sort of like Anytime Fitness where I don't have to be there every day. You know, if I'm gone, it's going to run just fine without me. Um, there's estimators, like sales, everything will get taken care of operationally. Everything will be fine. But if I'm there, I can drop in every day, try to help, try to encourage, try to coach, try to you know, really coach. You know, with the people that are the managers, the people that are new, try to coach people, put them in the right position on the team and make sure they succeed. And that becomes my role. It's like, I want you to succeed. Talk to me if there's any way that I can make sure that happens. And so it's a very different. It's very different for me. And more important, it's different for the culture of the business. And so on the, on the last episode, I talked a lot about culture. And even on Landscape Business Course podcast, like, I've been talking about culture a lot. And at, I'm going to a big conference down in Kentucky in October for landscapers. GIE, and uh, I'm speaking down there, and I'm speaking about creating a world-class culture. So culture in a business is something I think is like the heartbeat of the organization, whether it's for-profit, non-profit, uh, in, in an educational environment, in a business environment, doesn't matter. Like the culture of the people involved and what that culture atmosphere is, is the heartbeat of the business, but there's a definite change as the, begins, as the business begins to grow. So again, when I started, I, it, I, all the people I hired, they were my friends. I knew them for a long, I had known them for a long time. Uh, I went to church with them. They're relative, relative, related to me. Like, and that's a good thing. Like I said, starting out sometimes, your first employees, it's all about just having trust in them, knowing that they're not going to stab you in the back, knowing they're not going to rob from you, knowing that they want you to succeed, knowing that you can trust them to leave for the day and do their job correctly. And that they're going to, they want to put a good face on for the public image of the business. Like that's really all you care about at the beginning. But as you begin to grow and you scale and you get more people, things have to change. Systems have to start regulating the people and what happens within the organization. No longer you, the founder, can you be there micromanaging or watching every single aspect of what's going on in the daily operations. And so now as that's happened, we've hired more people and now we have systems and more procedures. You know, what can, what can sometimes happen is the people who were originally with you, the people who just they started the business with you, they can get a little bit disoriented or even kind of, uh, it can be disconcerting for them to see that all of a sudden, like what to them was the culture and the fabric of the business of trusting each other and just like everyone doing what was right and just not having systems and procedures and not having a hierarchy, not having managers. Like that might've worked when you were small, but as you begin to grow, that has to change. There has to be that hierarchy. There has to be some sort of systems in place. Otherwise you all, as the founder will always have to be there to micromanage things. And so as the business scales, you have to realize that there are going to be changes, that there, the culture is going to have the tipping point. And in my mind, when a business goes from small like very, very small business to a, a business that's scaling, growing, thriving, and going to live without the founder and is going to have create generational wealth and is going to live beyond the lifespan of the founder. I feel like that happens when the founder can step back on the systems and procedures, run the business. But in order for that to happen, a lot of times the culture changes within the business. And that can be hard for the people who started out because they'll be like, well, didn't we just trust each other? And can't we just like, you know, why does it have to be all these rules? Why, why do I have to report to a manager now? Why, why can't the founder be there to answer my questions and give support when I need them all the time? And so I feel like there's that cultural tipping point where it goes from the founder running the business to the systems and procedures running the business. That is a big tipping point and you can lose people there, but it's very vital to make that transition if you're going to scale the business profitably, right? Because you can run things you know, all hunky dory cloud, you know, everything's rainbows and sunshine for a while, right? Five, 10 employees, you know them all, you trust them all. It's very like, you can manage them though. You're always, you know, touching them. You can always see them. You always get to, you get to see them in the mornings, see them when they leave. You're very high contact. There comes a point where that's just not possible. As you hire more people, as you hire strangers, I mean, you have to hire the strangers because like you, you don't, you run out of friends to hire. And so, 
uh, there is that cultural tipping point. And so we're experienced, we really experienced it last year when I started the process of switching out to being out of the, the day-to-day operations because I had to simplify the business model. And so we had to cut out services that people liked. People wanted to be doing them. They were exciting. They were fun. And we had to like focus on some core competencies. We had to cut out some things. We had to s- not slow down our rate of growth, but what we did, we actually cut out pieces of the business that were not scalable, that were um, not profitable, that were hard to duplicate in terms of finding laborers to do the work. And so that was hard for our culture. Like we were always had been in the past, but like grow, get more services, find interesting work, make more work for the employees so that they can work year round. Like it was hard to now switch like, okay, now we're actually focused on profitability. Now we're focusing on making sure that we generate enough profit profit to support the franchisees and, and make sure they have what they need. And so like we're changing the business model. Like that's really a cultural shift to think like, okay, we used to be so concentrated on just making people happy, our employees, and making sure that they were like satisfied and well paid. And now it's like, look, now we have an organization now we have a system we have to run now we have other franchisees and people depending on us and so it, there's a definite cultural shift from being very individualistic and looking out for individuals within the company to like look as an organism as a team as a whole body this organization in order for it to go forward there has to be systems there has to be procedures and the founder cannot be the one dictating every little thing that happens in the business and so i truly believe that the founder is still the driving force of the culture but the culture cannot be run by the founder for a sustained period of time if it is scaling to high extent like if it's growing really really fast the founder cannot be in every single aspect of culture and dictating it all. Eventually, they have to create systems and procedures that align with the way they want the culture to be and then allow the systems and procedures to run the business. And so we're in that transition now. Like now it's, it's no longer me being able to tell them what to do. It's no longer, you know, I'm not there to tell them what equipment should be, how it should be done. And, and there's, it's de- definitely not perfect. So we're trying to figure things out. We're trying to figure out where things are breaking, where things, what, what, what's wrong with what we're doing now and improving it. But it's definitely the model that we're trying to create for franchisees where a franchisee does not have to be there all the time once they've created the systems and it's in place and the model's running correctly. And so I think there is a cultural tipping point though, definitely where it switches from trust to more of a cultural uh, uh, system oriented business. And that has to happen because trust can go so far when you have so many employees, but when you get so, like when you get hundreds of, of employees, it's very difficult to create a trusting relationship with all of them and maintain that trusting relationship on an ongoing basis, daily basis, when you don't see them for weeks on end. And so eventually the systems of your culture have to run the business. And so, and they have to run, they dictate the culture. And that's something that I've, I'm really interested in right now because I've always thought that the founder dictates the culture, but now I'm beginning to think that the founder creates systems that align with the way they want the culture to be, and then the systems should be dictating the culture. When should someone get fired? Well, the founder will dictate that system and thereby the system would fire an individual that's not in compliance with the culture that the founder wants. So something I've been thinking about, something that we're going through, and in that process, segueing into my next kind of topic is disciplining employees. I hate disciplining employees. Um, I'd almost rather fire somebody instead of discipline them. And it's a really a weakness because when I fire some people, I've had it said where it's like, well, I, well why didn't you just tell me that, that what I was doing wrong? Why didn't you? And in my mind, it's like, well, why didn't you see the writing on the wall? Why didn't you just, you know, use common sense? Like if you didn't, in my mind, in my mind, the reason I do it honestly is like, look, if you're not doing this automatically, you're ultra, obviously not a fit for what we're trying to do here, the culture here. And so that's usually when I will just fire someone. That being said, it's partly my fault in the fact that for me, it's easier to fire someone and just be like done with them than have to discipline them, coach them, you know, tell them they're doing something wrong and they do it again and they do it again and you're trying to help them. Like for me, I'd rather just fire somebody. Um, But disciplining them takes a lot of work. It's something that I'm not the best at. I'm not, like I had an hour and a half long conversation disciplining an employee last week, trying to help them improve because they've been, you know, their performance has been really poor. And so um, that's not easy. I didn't like it. It was not enjoyable. It was not fun in any way, shape or form, but it has to be done. And 
you know, I'll be doing less of that for more of my managers on a day to day level, but I, I will still be involved in it on the higher level type stuff and things that are important. Like I would have had that hour and a half conversation because it was really important and it could have gone where he would have went, gotten fired. But disciplining an employee, in my mind, it really it's very hard to create hard set rules around firing people. The reason for that is because if you're going to make it where your employee handbook dictates everything, like you're either going to have a 400 page handbook or you're going to have very, very gray areas of when you fire somebody. And so the gray areas, the reason their gray areas are created is because you really have to understand the context for which they are going to get fired. Right? So in my mind, you know, an individual that comes to me, I want to know why. Like a lot of times when it comes to employees issues, this is something that I've thought about for customers for a long time. Like when a customer says no to me, it's usually not because of me. Like, or when a customer uh, is, for example, the gym, if they come in, they're mad about like canceling their gym membership, for example, and they're in a contract. Like, in my mind, it's like they're not mad at me because we can't cancel their contract and they sign a 12 month agreement. There might, there, they might be mad because something else happened with their family or someone else just got sick um, or they're going through a divorce or like in my mind, whenever a customer says no or, or sorry, is mad and just like completely unrealistic, in my mind right away, it's just like, this is not about me. This is not about the situation. Like they are going through something else. And I try to think about that. I don't, I don't always think about that when it comes to uh, individuals in my life at all, like family or customers or people. I mean, like, I don't always think that like that, but I try to, I like, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt and think like, you know what? They're probably going through something I don't know about that is really, really horrible. And this is just, they're just taking it out on me. And so if I'm just patient and I allow them to kind of just vent, that'll be fine and good for them and they can move on. And so that's how I try to think about it. That being said, it's a little harder to think about that when it comes to employees because you're giving them something. You're giving them money in order for a return, i.e. their labor, mental power, mental work, uh, stress, whatever there comes entails with their job, you're paying them for it. So there should be an equal exchange. And so it's a little harder to just put up with it when you're actually giving something in return for quality labor or quality mental work. And so I think it's difficult, but it's definitely something that I'm working on. And that is taking into context when it comes to disciplining someone, or even when it comes to firing them, we an individual, I would have fired this person. Like if I would have just looked at what they did and the data and the employee handbook, they, they would have been fired. There would have been no question about it. But taking into account like things that have happened in their life, you know, personal deaths in the family, very close to them, like other sicknesses that are happening in their family, like taking those things into account is really important. And then you got to think, okay, maybe they're on medications. Uh, you know, maybe they're not getting enough sleep. Maybe there's financial pressure and they're ca it's causing them to do these other things that are not really who they are. And the easy way out of that is to fire them. The easy way out of that is to fire them and find somebody else. And I'm finding though that disciplining them is not easy. It's not the thing that's going to give me the best ROI. It's not going to help me. It's not going to give me more time. It takes time. It takes energy. I spend an hour and a half talking to this individual when a 30 second, 30 second voice message or text message or just a five second at the end of the day, I could have fired that individual. Um, do I know if that, that was the best decision? I don't know that. I do not know. Only time will tell whether or not disciplining this individual is the better thing to do instead of just firing them. But I think it's important. And again, I think it's important. Only time will tell in this one case. But I think it's important when it comes to firing, disciplining an employee to take into account the context of the situations they're going through outside of the workplace. What are they going through at home? What are they going through in their health? What are they going through in their past? What are they going through in their head? Like mental health is a real issue and medical issues that are aggravated by other pharmaceutical drugs is a real issue. Personal deaths in the family, things that people go through, those are real stuff and it messes with people's heads and it can mess with their performance and it can mess with the way they interact and the way that they go against the grain of the culture that you've set up in the business. And so I don't know if this individual in this case, the specific one's going to work out disciplining versus firing them. Usually I like to fire fast. Usually I like to allow, and you've all heard me say it, firing dictates the culture of your business. 
That being said, part of our culture is about giving second chances. Part of our culture is about caring. Part of our culture is caring for that person, not just when they're at work, but for their health outside of work and in their family. And so that's a hard line to draw. It's a hard thing to distinguish between. And I think each case deserves and needs specific attention from us as founders when we're making those decisions. And you know, understanding what they're going through. Like these are people, these are employees, they have a life, they have families, they have, they have stress. They're financially strapped. They, you know, they're going through something in their relationship. They're just you know, coming to a new part of life. If they're having kids or if uh, you know, someone went to college or a family, mover, family member moved away or they recently moved or just moving a house. Like it can be, it can change people. Like these, like humans are fragile in our minds and our bodies many times. And that's not like, I'm not dissing humanity or like the workplace or employees, not by no means. But we as humans are very fragile. Like things within the planetary universe, like the moon can affect you. And you know, drugs can affect you, and the type of air you breathe can affect you, and the sleep that you're having. Maybe they're just not sleeping. Maybe they're not, they didn't drink enough. They're dehydrated. Now you're getting a, a sick person talking to you, and it's going to affect the way they speak, and the way they act, and the way they conduct themselves, and the way their mood is. And that's not easy to think about when they've just done something that's against everything that your culture stands for. It's something I'm still thinking about, still learning about, and something I'm not great at is disciplining my employees. And it's something that's going to be interesting to actually look at now as I step out of day-to-day -day operations and I'm more of that coach kind of role and I'm not there. I'm not doing estimates anymore. Um, I'm not in sales anymore at Augusta. Like I'm strictly focused on franchising and supporting the franchisees. And so it's going to be interesting to see how disciplining now works without me there. So stay tuned because I'm still learning and I hope you can learn along the way. You've been listening to the Business Bootcamp podcast. I'm Mike Andes. Until next time, be great because nothing else pays. And if you have a question on how to start, grow, or save your business, email me businessbootcamppodcast at gmail.com or just go to businessbootcamppodcast.com and fill out the form. Thanks so much.